Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. Welcome. Today we're going to be doing a really fun tutorial. And if it's your first time here, I hope you enjoy my method to my madness and my process. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for joining me again. We're going to be doing a new pattern for me um, and a new designer for me. I see so. Uh, we're going to be doing the Fortuna backpack. This backpack is really nice. It's, I think it could be for beginners or advanced and you can do so many different variations. They, in this pattern, we get to either choose the binding method or the birthing method. And you already know if you've been a long time subscriber, I love binding. I love it. I love it. But I understand at some points, every machine can't take it. It depends on your machine. Um, I. I noticed the more old school, like Bernina's and the more like heavy metal machines do really, really well with binding. Um, the more fancier machines that are more computerized, not so much, but, but they could be. Um, this, in this backpack, the stabilization we're gonna be using is foam. And if you're using by any foam or even Pellons, if you zigzag stitch across the, the edge of all your cut, it flattens out the foam significantly where I feel like you can go through any machine. It's just an extra step, but it's worth it. You have to do extra steps, whether you have an industrial or when you have a domestic. It's getting to know your machine and becoming one with it. That makes it a little bit easier. So for this backpack, um, we have, she, she supplies so many great, um, instructions. I like how the Fortuna backpack is a bag to be worn with two straps or one over the shoulder. It could be for anyone, regardless of gender, age, features a fully lined interior as well as a main zipper closure. Um, there's a functional backpack access as well as you have adjustable straps, a carry handle, and two pockets on the side. It's she she has it for intermediate levels, but a, a like an adventure beginner could do it. I honestly believe a beginner could do this. Take your time, read the instructions. Um, if you're visual learning, look at this video first before you cut out. I'm gonna follow the backpack pattern to a T. We're gonna do the binding method instead of the birthing method. I will add clips where I would think where you could modify, and maybe that can strike up some added like bonus features that you wanna to add to your bag before you create it. Um, I'm a person that believes in the blueprints and then you can add more details and have your own pizzazz. So we're going to be doing that today and we're going to start with the first page of the pattern after the cutting instructions and what the recommended, there's a, the layout of how you are going to tape together your pattern pieces, have your pattern pieces. If you're following along with me, have your pattern pieces with you because there are important marks on each one of the pattern pieces that are critical for us putting the bag together. So we're gonna start with step one. And before we're gonna get started, I always get asked this and I always seem to forget. Um, the cotton, the, I'm using cotton today and the fabric I'm using is from Judy Cotton's Making Apron designed by Coco Siki. I got this from Etsy like six years ago. It was designed to be an apron print and I actually have three of them and I was going to make one for myself and two for my daughter's faith and hope, but I never got uh, around to it. So now I'm using it for a bag. <laughs> so we're going to start with our front exterior assembly. We're going to grab the two pockets, which is piece B. And on piece B, you had to cut mirror pieces. You're going to have two that one set of mirror pieces for the exterior and one set for the interior with these pieces. What I did is these two are going to be are pinned together and I drew, I, you know, me, I like want to be as accurate as I possibly can be. I drew my three eighths of an inch line going up and going across. And the reason why I draw it, because I want to know where this pivotal point is where I need to stop and go up so I don't stitch up and get it caught up in the seam allowance. Once you sew those two pieces together, then I would, I grabbed a pair of pinking shears. I'm using a pair of Kai and they're N5350. I got these off of Amazon. Um, a really cool friend of mine, her name is Dalva. She recommended these to me when I was making another pattern because 
my other ones were just, whew, they were not fun. And I appreciate this recommendation. I did save up for them. They're, they are pretty hefty in price, but the, it is, they are kind of worth it. I, I have no regrets on purchasing them. So then I turn the pocket and you, at this point, um, you get a, like, a boning tool or a back of a chopstick or anything that's not blunt and you just press out the corners. Um, I would rotate and then I would press this with an iron, but I didn't put my mini iron on. So I'm just gonna use a seam roller real quick and roll this out. And if you're using like waterproof canvas or vinyl, you can't use an iron anyways. Um, a seam roller or rolling it out with your fingers or a boning tool helps tremendously. And I'm just gonna poke out this corner a little bit more because I know it can be a little bit more prominent. And then what I'm going to do is top stitch like in step six. I'm using 70 weight thread, a mon thread and I'm using it in the top and bottom. Today we're on the sewing machine I'm using is a 5550. Uh, sorry, not the, I'm so used to saying 5550 N. I'm using the 1541 S. I'm at a stitch 4.5. If you hear rattling on the background, that is the camera. And also I have like um, disc like disc measuring disc on the side and it just sounds it. My machine is oiled and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one over here. One little back stitch. All right. And I'm going to trim my threads. And we have our two pockets. I'm going to move my pinking shears. We're now going to grab um, our main exterior piece. I already have my foam attached to this. Another thing you can do is if you have fusible foam, you can trim. They're on the pattern. They have you trim out three eighths of the inch all the way around and you can fuse it on. I didn't have the fusible one, so I just made it within my, my stitch allowance. So we're going to put these on and I'm going to grab some clips that break instantly on camera. That's always awesome. <laughs> Let's see, uh, put some clips because I want to make sure I catch everything and everything stays within the seam allowance. We'll grab this one. I'm going to actually trim this one up because this one has like a little excess overage and I don't want that to be interfering with my seam allowance. I want everything as even as even as I possibly can. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to go stitch down around and top. Now for this area, this area has a lot of um, stress. So when I get to this point, I'm going to do a couple extra stitches in different directions. They're called bar tacks. So that way when someone puts their cell phone or puts pencils or candy, you know this, that's a theme with me, candy, <laughs> um, into this bag, they can't, it won't pop off. You could put a rivet in each one of these. If you do put a washer, like either a faux leather washer or um, a real leather, it's a punch with a hole. And that way, if when the bag gets tugged, the rivet won't just come through and rip through the fabric because you're breaking through the weft and the weave of the cotton if you're using cotton and you're perforating it if you're using vinyl. So that would just be my friendly little suggestion. We're going to base this on at one eighth of a seam allowance. And I'm going to, I don't know why we start there. I'm gonna start here and go up. So we're doing this at one eighth of an inch. You can back stitch. It's just a small basting. 
if you're using cotton, it does, you can go within your seam allowance. It's not going to perforate. So I'm using cotton right now. And then I am going to pivot up. There are there is a tester that made this one pocket, and I thought that was a really cool um, design. I'm going to just pin this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. When I'm doing it. We're gonna go up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one stitch over where it's gonna hit onto the main panel. Then I'm gonna bring it back, and then I'm going to pivot. Like I'm going up, but I'm not going to go, I'm only going to go up one or two stitches and go back. So I have a bar tack on this. So that way it, this high stress area won't just, the stitches won't rip. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to align everything up as well as I possibly can. And I am going to clip Oops. clip this in place. So I'm going to actually start in the center. Holding your threads. I'm going to do one, two, and then I'm going to back stitch, one stitch off, come back, go up, and come back. I know that seems like a lot of extra steps, but this, it, these are two pockets that I are very going to be used a lot. So you want to make sure that, you know, you, the seams don't rip, the stitches don't rip, and you're like really upset because you did all this work. And then I am going to trim my threads and I'm just going to clip off any excess that's ha that's hanging off a little bit because you don't want it to like any little excess so that way that way everything just adds up one eighth of an inch one fourth of an inch if something is a little bit off it can make your whole bag fill off what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a name tag. I was thinking about putting my logo on here, but I really love the scheme of the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this over here and I'm just going to tack that down so I can get caught up a little of my seam allowance and poke through a little bit. And if you have fun tags available, that this is awesome awesome time. I wish I had an Alice in Wonder one that like said drink me or um, something off with their heads or off with their threads on this case. Um, it would be it would be super cute. All right so we have the front. My phone wants to talk during this. All right so we're going to now grab we're going to start working on the exterior back. We're going to grab our zipper and the, the beautiful thing about each one of her pattern piece uh, when we go to each section in step two she gives you the exact measurements of your um, zipper so you're already you're starting off in the gate so we're gonna grab our zipper and then we're gonna draw grab pattern piece K the two zipper tabs and we're going to put these together I'm going to just clip And just put. All right, so we're going to um, sew these zipper tabs on with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And 
and I'm just going to bring this around and do the three eighths of an inch right there. Okay, so where you can modify. Now, we only have exterior pieces. When you look at pattern piece K, it only asks you to take your exterior pieces. If you want an interior piece, you can, but you could put that on there. So that way if someone opens up the pocket fully, you won't see it. But the way the zipper tape is, it's really pretty as well as it helps alleviate another layer or two of bulk. So with that being said, if your machine could take it, go for it. If it can't, then nobody's gonna see this. <laughs> Nobody will see it. I did it with the first one and it worked out really well. But it does, every little, every layer helps when you're, um, you know, working with bulk. Like you can have an industrial, but area looks bulky. It looks bulky. No matter, yeah, you can sew through it. Doesn't mean that it looks right. All right. So we have our, our piece all squared away. We have it going to make sure it's the right size. We're going to just trim that up. My zipper tape I got from, it's a Canadian, um, oh my gosh. I, I, if I can't think of it on hand, offhand right now, but I use their zipper tape a lot and they're very nice and they have really great packaging. <laughs> I, if, I'll put it in the comments in the bio section. So we're going to grab our C pattern piece C2. And we're going to put right sides together. So what I like to do just to make sure I have everything. This has no foam on it yet because we're going to sew it when we're done making this pocket. So I did a little snip. I'm not going to snip into my um, zipper tape because it's all bad when you do that. I'm going to make sure the zipper pull is going the direction I want it. I've, if you want it going to the left or to the right, it's all personal preferences. I like my zipper tape to close to the left. I'm just making a little mark in green. And I'm going to clip that on. We're going to base this down using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I just want to really want to make sure that is Okay, now I can see it better. Pop some clips. When you get to the zipper section, you have to move around just to make sure you're in the needle down position. So we're gonna use a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. The number two on my, um, on my sewing machine is one fourth of an inch. I have a narrow foot um, on my machine that I got from Steve from Sewing Gold, and this is this foot does not come off my machine. It is it's my favorite. If something happened to this foot, I think I would cry. <laughs> Snipping threads. Then we're going to grab. We have two pocket pieces. They're pattern piece M. And we are going to find the sifter here. This, uh, the coordinating thread came from connecting threads. I got it from their Valentine collection like five years ago. I bought this fabric with little hearts. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but I'm gonna use it. See, your stash does pay off. <laughs> I was like, oh, hearts, red hearts. This is very Alice, let's do this. So we're going to sew this now together we're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. It's step 17.
Again, when you get to the zipper section, just stop with the needle down, move your zipper head, and go from there. Trim threads. We're going to open up our zipper. We're going to stitch this down using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is a great time to utilize your press. If you don't have your, um, I mean, an iron by you, just finger press it and until, you, until you're happy, you can use a seam ruler. And I'm going to top stitch at 1 8 of an inch. 1 8 of an inch is in between, it's this portion of my foot. So like when I'm here with the zipper, I'll, I'll like pull gently because I don't want to make sure um, the zipper doesn't get like, try to get more sandwiched in than it needs to. That's sometimes how you can get like a wavy zipper. All right, so we have that. We are basically going to be doing the same thing. We're going to, again, make sure you have your centers marked. And if you have to remark it, then so be it. It doesn't hurt. I'm going to use this green pen and I'm going into the one fourth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to grab pattern piece um, C1. But before we do that, we're going to take one of the piece M's and Base this down using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. One fourth of an inch. Then I'm going to find my center on my top piece. I'm really pleased on how this apron turned out because it wasn't a very big panel. It was probably like a half a yard long, like wide and one yard tall, like a little, like a little under one yard actually. So then we're going to, to the middle pieces that we made, we're going to clip this in place. And I want to make sure that my middle is meeting the right area. I will like remark and mark over and over again because I I hate when like the seam is kind of shifty like it's moving around. So we're gonna use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on this. I'm gonna move my zipper head real quick. Then I'm gonna stop and move it again. So I'm going to press this and I'm going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch. Okay. 
So what we're going to do from here is we are going to first close up the bottom seam. What I like to do on the bottom seam is I like to flip it. I know because automatically when you're looking at your this bag, this the the zipper close the the lower part of the zipper is going to be a little bit shorter. So what I'm going to do is just close it up from here. This And what we're going to do from here is I am going to sew down each side. I'm going to sew down from, it's, I'm going to sew down from the top and stop here at the bottom because it's going to get caught up again when we um, baste it onto the foam. But I just want to be able to trim off that excess and the pocket stays together. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, trim off that excess. Grab that. And then we're gonna grab our pattern piece A and we're just going to grab a pen or a pencil, whatever you have handy. I'm gonna grab my scissors and some weights real quick. <laughs> and we're going to draw what we're gonna trim off. Just retracing. Then I'm gonna place this pattern piece on the side. And then I'm going to trim right above the green line or on it as much as possible. Don't trim, don't trim more. So I'd rather you trim less and then have to go back and redraw than trim too much and you're like, yeah, it doesn't fit onto the foam. <laughs> I did too much. All right. So we have the back piece. I'm going to grab the foam, place it on top. And I'm just going to baste all the way around this. You can use one fourth of an inch, one inch, whatever you like, especially if you're using cotton. If you're using vinyl, I would suggest one eighth of an inch. If you're using cotton, you're just compressing it down more if you use like a one fourth of an inch. trim any excess foam that's bulging out. And there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we have this really cool pocket in the back that's now all enclosed. All right. Now we're gonna work on the back straps. So we're gonna put this aside and I'm gonna show you how innovative this back strap is. I've actually never done it this way before. 
and I was really excited to see out the, the process. So with the back, um, with the straps, you have your measurements that they give you in the in the um, pattern. She takes um, webbing, like you can see, I have a reddish burgundy color of webbing, and you use vinyl on top. But so you have that where the vinyl is not going to stretch and you will you won't get that weird breaking believe it or not even if you double up all four layers and you fold this into one inch vinyl still stretches you still need something like either a cross grain ribbon twill tape something that can make it have not stretch so by having the webbing on here it doesn't stretch and then the webbing is about three to four inches longer and you wrap it around and you have a nice clean finish and not needing a bag in that is genius i absolutely love this method and i will be incorporating it a lot so i have one strap done so let's do another one so you can see how it's put together so we have our webbing which i'm going to stick around my neck right now <laughs> and then we have our two inch straps it's two inch wide so i have my tape down that the paper just didn't want to stay on there that is there I have my one inch drawing and then what I usually do is I kind of um, bring in a seam ruler because this particular tape I got I got off of Amazon I, I don't know who it's from but it the, the tape does not want to stick it's a weird thing because it doesn't gum up my needle um sometimes it really works for me and other times it's like nope not today Okay, and I'm just rolling it out. If you had, if you were doing this with cotton, um, you would just fold it and press it. I like this because it gives the webbing a like a very professional look to it, as well as it more personable, like the whatever you tailored for the bag can just like really pop off and come to life. Yes, the seam rolling could be tedious. <laughs> trust me i know but it is really i like the way the end result looks it looks like more pressed and uh, it just I, it's my preference i have a seam roller at every sewing station or even cutting station because if i'm putting double-sided tape and it's like i notice that it's lifting up i can press it down and it works really well together. Okay, and let's see. Let me get this. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is grab some double-sided tape that has a lot of stuff on it. Don't judge me, my, my, my tape rolls fall on the floor a lot and I have a lot of threads, I'm really bad. <laughs> but it works nonetheless. I'm putting down um, one fourth of an inch double-sided tape down the center so that way it won't get into my seam allowance when I'm sewing. And as I'm doing it, I'm just putting a pressing, um, pressure so that way I can make sure that it's on there. And then I'm going to lift up some and then just slowly start putting these two together. And again, it, this, the vinyl won't stretch because of it. It'll have strength because of it. And I like the whole two-tone effect. And this, like this particular is like seatbelt webbing and it's a little on the thinner side. So it gives it a little bit more thickness, I guess I would like to say. So that way it just, I don't know, it feels more substantial when these two things are merged together. All right. 
So I'm just going to reposition that. And while I'm here, I'm just going to seam roll, making sure that double-sided tape, the two, are, nothing will shift, nothing will move. And I'm going to take my lighter and I'm going to singe the ends. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take double-sided tape on this side and grab a small piece and drop my strap in the process. It's all part of the process. <laughs> and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it on the webbing. And I'm going to bring that over to the front. And just roll that out. So we have this and now we're going to sew one eighth of an inch um, down both sides. You can, it's on your, depends on your machine. I know this is gonna sound really weird, but because this is only three small layers, my stitching, my bobbin thread stitching will look better than my top stitching. So I'm gonna do something that you're gonna be like, why are you putting the vinyl down towards the thing? There's there's a reason for my madness. The, the stitching looks better with lighter weight material when I have it facing down on the machine, the bobbin tension is better than the top tension. And I know you can fix that. It just, it's one of those weird things when you get to know your machine. And I'm doing one eighth of an inch. That's number one on my machine. Because I don't need any clips, I'm kind of letting it fly. You can take it slow. There's no race. It all depends on what works for you. And then when I get to this area, I'm going to stop about like where I'm about one fourth of an inch, just hop over a couple of, uh, a couple stitches, bring it back to the one eighth. I just like hit myself directly in the face with it. <laughs> Knowing your machine is key. And you can see there's like not one stitch out of place. <laughs> the bobbin, my bobbin thread tension is like on point when it comes down to straps and whatnot. So we have this and then we are going to also so we have our two straps our two connectors that are you do the same and i actually really like this method of um putting a thinner webbing in because it really does help tremendously with um it not stretching and it being just more substantial Sorry, I'm burning off threads. Or mil not burning, you, you know the gel, melting on a little bit. So I did the same thing here. All right, so we have our straps and then I'm going to, we're going to actually make the handle. I, I like this method too. So I, they have really cool construction. Um, I see has some really cool constructions that I've never done before and it I love doing new patterns that I haven't done that kind of um, method before because what I think what happens is that if you've been sewing anywhere for over six months I believe that we get in our own way like some like someone I bake if somebody was like no you need to let your dough rise twice or whatever I'm gonna be like whatever I know what I'm doing my bro no, my family loves my rolls. I make the best cakes. I know it. But sometimes if stepping back and observing somebody new or observing something different can make your life change. Like I have this really good chocolate recipe and the person kept telling me to put a chocolate cake recipe, put beer. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Put beer. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Beer and sour cream. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. Ask everybody what their favorite dish for Thanksgiving and Christmas was in my family. And even my mother-in-law liked it. Now, people, you know how hard it is to please a mother-in-law or in-law. Of course, she liked it. She wanted the recipe. Sometimes we need to just step back. This is the same thing with sewing. We think we know everything, but we really don't. 
The moment we stop learning is the moment we stop living. Albert Einstein. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So we're gonna have one piece that's two inches. And we're gonna, oh, and my mother-in-law can really cook and bake. So can her son. Oh my God. <laughs> that's Kendall, if you're new to the channel. Okay, he can cook baking. He likes everything crunchy and I feel like <laughs> he can't do that. I, I think you I have to do two batches. One for those who don't like the little crispy edge and those who like it soft. I feel like this. Here's my what I what I think. That a baker is a person that is made macaroons, has made croissants, has make makes a pie pie crust from scratch. That is a baker. There's two. There's there's also the baker that's like, oh yeah, I like the box stuff and they can make jazz it up to taste good, but it's the same thing. That's like someone making a box gumbo saying it's a real thing. You know it's not the real thing. Did you say box? Yeah, there's box gumbo like in Jambalaya. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's the same thing. You got, okay. <laughs> it's the same thing. So yeah, so this is marine vinyl. Marine vinyl is a little bit thicker. Um, I have not made a, this backpack all marine vinyl, but because the color scheme of the Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland is black, red, and pink, I wanted to incorporate black somewhere like in the handles. I really hate this double sided tape, but I'm not going to get rid of it until it's done. I'll just gripe about it. That's part of the process. So what this does she has one piece that is this is one inches and this is like one and one fourth and it gives it a really cool looking effect and you'll see in just a moment when i get this other piece down try to get them in the center as possible so everything gets caught up roll it roll it roll it okay and then i'm going to grab some double-sided tape so that they don't shift and put it in the middle so that my stitches won't be in there. It won't gum up my needle. You can use drapes wash away type. Um, it's a lighter hold, but it'll get it done. Or you can use, um, I just like you see, I have magnet tack or I have glue by me all the time. If double sided tape doesn't work, I think glue does. <laughs> so I'm going to put this. See, ooh, black and pink. So pretty. All right. So we're going to roll this together and what I see says on here is that we're gonna sew our first stitches one eighth of an inch on both away from the center so if you were coming in if this was one eighth it'll be three eighths of an inch so I'm going to do kind of in between you can draw your lines if you wish are you gonna be broke like me? <laughs> I'm gonna hop over a couple stitches. One, two, four. Yep, that's And then we're going to go one eighth of an inch. So it will be only on the pink. So we'll hop over a few stitches. Take your time. Again, there's no race at all. Go at your own pace and have fun. So the handle is like super cool. We got the red excess contrasting thread. Okay, so we have all that. Then we're gonna grab piece. Piece H. 
we're going to draw the lines that are on the back of the pattern piece. There's a small big bit of gapping and it's important. It helps with reducing bulks at bulk seams because this strap, this back strapping is going to be for the back to conceal the um, the straps and the handle. So I'm folding to the green line. I drew And I'm gonna show you what it looks like before and after you roll. And the reason why I endorse seam rollers, and you can get seam rollers at Amazon, inline bags, um, leather stores have one. I have a really nice metal one um, from Serial Bag Maker that is at another station. And man, I love that thing. I love all seam rollers. And at first I didn't understand why people use them. And then I see them using it in cotton. I was like, cool, you don't have to iron. You can just like roll out that seam real quick. It's easy peasy when you're quilting. Right? But then when I see people use it, see how it's like kind of like wavy? You can finger press, but when you roll it, it acts like an iron, kind of. Like it really gives you nice, crisp corners. All right. So we have our connectors. I'm going to put. there, a clip here, and we're going to place these at a 45 degree angle. What we're going to do is you're going to grab your back piece and you're going to grab the pattern piece that has the marks on them that you need. So I'm going to, before I'm going to start marking where where my strap connector needs to be and also where notches where you need that need to meet up. The pattern piece is super important on this. It helps you tremendously. I'm marking the centers as well. All right. So I'm going to put these on at a 45 degree angle right above the line. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm going to put it right where the one edge, it will admit raw edges, and just kind of tilt it at, at a 45 degree angle. And then base stitch it. Do the same thing here. There's the line, putting the tip and just kind of tilting it at a 45 degree angle. Now, you can leave it like this, like how it is, because it's not gonna go anywhere. It's, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, but if you are a person that's like, hey, I've had like, you know, it come out of the seam before, what I would do, and what I could do right now, I could show you, is I would put a rivet. I would find your center. And put a rivet and make sure it doesn't go with it up into the seam allowance when you're there. Like it, there's nothing worse than when you accidentally like touch metal metal so I put I have a hole puncher which is right in front of me that I'm looking for and I'm just gonna punch a hole and I'm do it again on this side and then I'm going to use two rivets there's no rivets called for this pattern. You don't need them. I am a creature of habit. I'm really hard on things. So I have a tendency of putting rivets and everything because I know I'm rough. It's definitely not a need. It's a want.
I'm going to get my Revit setter. Sometimes I set them by hand, but normally when I'm filming, filming it's pretty late and I work in the basement and um, I don't want my neighbors to be like, what is that pounding at nine o'clock at night? How dare she? <laughs> so this is when the press comes in. Got it from Minkus and Margo. I bought it like three or four years ago. Best investment in my life. Um, she's a mom, they're a mom and pop star on Etsy. So we have that. Then we are going to do a mark at two and a half inches down. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go, we're going to make a part, mark at the back at two and a half inches. I was absolutely right. So I'm going to get my chalk pencil. All right, so I know it's confusing because you've seen a white like white line there. We're just gonna follow the, the first one. And then I'm just going to fold it in half on itself and make sure I can find my center. And just mark it with the chalk pencil. All right. And then just a, you could triple check your center. I'm gonna mark uh, the center that I drew earlier in here and it's the same line. There you go. So there's my center. I'm going to take this away. And we're going to take our strap. And we are going to, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a mark about a half an inch from each line. I mean, the center line. So it becomes one inch. A one inch box box right there and I'm going to sew the handle to meet the first line like that so we're gonna do some basting stitching or I don't really call it they're, they're gonna be permanent so we're not removing them so I'm going to sew one fourth of an inch And I'm just going to green this, making sure that there's not a weird curve over like this. Cutting threads. Then um, we're going to bring our straps in. So the part that doesn't have the that doesn't have that really cool edge, we're going to have on the top. We're going to Put this right on side by side right sides facing each other and i'm going to sew this down have our straps connected to the back trimming the threads then we're going to take our strap our strap um, concealer the piece that we just made and we're going to place it two inches down so I'm just going to one move this over here have the straps act right I'm going to grab some double-sided tape. I'm going to stick it in the center. You don't need double-sided tape. I just, I have better fingers. So I'm going to flatten this on my straps. This is, this ruler is exactly two inches and I'm going to Make sure that everything is covering. Yep. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew this at. I'm going to put some clips in here because the, the tape doesn't go all the way through and through. We're going to sew at one eighth of an inch and then also at one fourth of an inch. So let me move this clip and let's start with one eighth. And I'm just folding. I made this more difficult. I could have had it go in the other direction. I don't know why I did that. going to squish my bag and turn it around and go one eighth of an inch going down this way. I'm going to flip this around. again and this time we're going to do one fourth of an inch <laughs> I'm just like guess what I'm knocking everything down and then Bring this around and just do the same. The bottom one's more decorative, but the other, you have like now three rolls of stitching on your straps. They shouldn't go anywhere. But if you wanted to, you could put a rivet on each one of them in the back for decorative and also for just stabilization. But the way this is, your straps are not going to go anywhere. All right. And then I'm just going to trim the excess. Okay, getting those threads. And then what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to, I guess, still trim threads, man. Wow. We're going to roll these up real quick. So they're out of our way. My puppy's acting a donkey upstairs. I hear him. Rolling these out of the way, like they really do help when you're putting together your bag. <laughs> all right, so we have that all set us rolled up and set aside. We have our everything um, tacked down. I'm just gonna trim up, making sure there's no excess. Because when you're binding, you need to trim. If you're not gonna bind, then you can leave it in your seam allowance because it's gonna be tucked away. So we are going to put this aside for right now. We're going to grab the side connectors. Believe it or not, we're almost done with that. There's not a whole lot of pieces left. Mm -hmm. So we're going to grab pocket, um, I'm sorry, side pieces uh, E. I'm going to do the same thing. You're going to um, take your 3 eighths of an inch measurement. I know we had a 3 eighths of an inch ruler. <laughs> huh. I just had it. Can you pass me that ruler over right there? It's blue. Thank you. So you're going to, I like to measure out. You don't have to. You, you have the marks on your machine, then you're okay. Um, just measure out three eighths of an inch. 
and again, three eighths of an inch. So, um, and then trim. I'm gonna use pinking shears. I just, I don't know. Whenever I work with cotton, I always use pinking shears. I sometimes do it with vinyl too because the way the, the, the bulk is distributed, it's just easier. All right, we're gonna turn these right sides out. I was trying to really grab every last piece of that apron um, fabric. So I have one side with the hearts, clovers, like the cards, like off with your head. And then the other side, I have Alice. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to then top stitch this like it shows on um, step six and seven. Just top stitch the top part. like wool infused too in this and it's working really nice um you don't want a whole bunch of a lot of stabilizer in your um side pockets i mean if you wanted to have it like be it like a more of an accent feature you can add foam or some some other stabilization but if you're really trying to put like water bottles something in it, you want it to have a little bit of give so we have our two pieces there we are going to grab Pattern piece F, the exterior. Now on the pattern again, there are measurements and I marked them in green. So you can see right here, we're going to put the lining out. I have pink vinyl and it's on by any foam. And what I'm going to do is match the top part of every end. Make sure it's going in the right direction because that would be super unfortunate if you put the pockets in the wrong one. And I'm going to put some clips on the sides. All right, so I'm gonna have that one side clipped. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Mark the areas. You can do mesh pockets too. There's an option for like having elastic and having the mesh pockets so it could fit like a bigger water bottle. I like that option too. I just love the way when the little pockets poke out. So I went for that. And again, I was trying to utilize every last inch of this tape and fabric. fabric. All right, so when we take this to our machine, we're going to sew one eighth of an inch um, going down, across, and up. sure all raw edges touch raw edges. Now what you could definitely do if you wish is put like a, a second row of stitching like at one fourth of inch so it, it's extra but I trust this this thread with I have used it a lot it's pretty strong. So we're going to I love a mon thread that's like my favorite thread for any machine. I use Saba on my smaller Juki, but it's part of the Mon thread, thread um, family, so. Just a nice polyester. Get on my clips because I know I'll need them later. <laughs> Trim 
them into the threads. Okay, so once we do we do that, what we're gonna do is we are going, she has she shows you what it's like to have a mesh pocket. Um, what you would need to do for the raw edges. Very similar binding for top and bottom. We're now going to grab, we're gonna put this right over here because we're gonna need it in a minute. We're gonna grab pattern piece G. And here are my two exterior and my interior. We are going to um, put the pocket on. I mean the, I can't talk today. Um, we're gonna put our zipper in. So I'm going to face this down, right sides facing right sides, right sides of the zipper down facing the right sides of the exterior fabric. And I'm gonna base it down at one fourth of an inch. Now you can clip and put it all together. For some odd reason, I have not mastered that skill. <laughs> so I literally do this every single time just to ensure that everything's caught up in the seam. our interior pieces and lay it right on top of the zipper. And we are going to sew this. So a three eighths of an inch. When you get to the zipper, you know, just Adjust. You don't have to put your zipper heads on, um, your zipper holes on in the beginning if you don't want to either. You can put it on towards the end. Oh, I need to change out my bobbin. That was perfect time. At least I wasn't top, stop top stitching. That's the only bad thing about having um, an industrial. I know there are some industrials that will tell you like the that are that will say like you know your danger below water percent. You're out of problem, <laughs> right? But most, I that's what I like about like my brothers is like it tells you when your bottom's low and all that stuff, and it just makes life a whole lot easier. What I do from here is trim my threads and I'm going to pull the lining nice and taut like where it's not it's going to cover up the zipper and I just pop some clips so that way it, can, it won't shift when I'm top stitching at one eighth of an inch without separating the zipper teeth, Genova. Come on. You don't have to use contrasting thread. I just think it's a, a really cool feature, like rivets or fancy zipper tape. Um, it just gives it a, a little extra oomph. Okay, 
we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And we're gonna put the gusset together. All right, one fourth of an inch. Zipper heads. Grabbing the interior piece. pull these off because I don't want any like when I when I put it together I want to make sure that the zipper teeth heads are not like separating when I'm constructing it so I'll stick these back on together after I'm done sewing this and top stitching three eighths of an inch top stitch at one eighth of an inch or you do one fourth whatever your top stitching preference is now the seams are getting too bulky for the top stitching just increase your stitch length or try changing out for a big a bigger needle i'm using a 116 on this one there's not it's foam so it's 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 gonna work good Now I'll stick zipper in. And now the zipper wants to act. Always. It's like I have like zipper anxiety when I'm filming. And I could just pop them on like candy when I'm not being filmed. <laughs> Is Hope messaging you? Or me? No, that's your people mm -hmm. and your sister. Okay. Sorry, I thought my daughter, the middle child, was messaging. She's puppy watching right now. That came out really sloppy. You want to make sure your zipper teeth are aligned right because if you if they're not, then it can make your whole zipper look wonky, and nobody wants that. So 
Sorry, I gotta. I'm telling you, every single time, if you watch any of my videos, like whenever I put zipper pulls on, it looks like it takes forever. But if I'm not being filmed, like matter of seconds. You can always use a zipper, like a zipper jig tool as well. I have harmed myself when I used them, so <laughs> it doesn't get used very often. So we're going to take this. We put our panels together. We're done with that part. We're going to now, um, if you're going to birth, this is a part, you don't need to do this. We're going to be finishing this entire gusset by um, binding. Um, if you're going to be birthing, skip over to page 48. So this is for the binding method. I'm going to attach the exterior right sides together and I'm going to use a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance to base the exterior on. And then I'm going to use a 3 8 of the seam allowance when we paste the interior. Sorry, I'm going to have things rolling. Take your time. I know you could say I want you to try to do it all in one stitch, but if something lifts, then it becomes frustrating because you have to like re sew and it's not fun. Three eighths of an inch. And then trim these threads. I, the reason why I like binding, I like binding because it gives the bag bones, like a really nice bone structure. It just stands up better. It, and even with something softer like um, foam, and I love foam, it just gives it a lot more structure. Top stitching at one eighth of an inch, or you can do one fourth, your, your choice. Heck, you can do two rows of the stitching just for decorative. And I'm gonna take all these because I'll we'll be using them pretty soon. I'm gonna bring this exterior right sides together. And time to do like any like excess like stabilizer or um, foam hanging out you can trim it as you go so that way you're not worried about it like this foam and these tails that bring the interior in at three eighths of an inch hold your tails Okay, we're gonna kind of go through a loop, tug the interior nice and taut, and we're going to top stitch this down as well. around this so that it could become just like one solid piece and nothing gets misshapen when um, when we do the interior so I'm going to 
do the clip all the way around. And you just want, you do one, one eighth or one fourth of an inch all the way around, whatever is easier for you. I know this seems like a step that you don't want to do, but I promise you it's worth it. I have had where I thought like everything was all nice and then I turned the bag right sides out and like a piece just is missing and it, it's, it just, it's frustrating and then you have to re-pick and you're upset, I'm upset for you. It happens to all of us. And again, this is a perfect time if you have like excess threads or excess foam coming out, you could just trim it up so that way it's not in your seam when um when you um start putting the gusset together. And we're gonna do the other side real quick. All right. Sometimes these little processes that seem like you could do without are the thing, exactly what you need to do to make it work. Make sure your um, pockets are going the same direction that they don't get like caught up in their like weird Bentley. Again, trim up any excess overhang, any excess like stabilizers that are poking through because you just don't want those in your seam. All right, we have one unit right now and apparently I can't trim threads to save my life. All right, so once we do that, let's see. We're going, our gusset is complete and we're gonna start preparing our interior. The beautiful thing about this interior, it's really simplistic and this is where you can add some fun modifications. You can add slip pockets, um, center divider, all this fun stuff. We, with this, I have my two interior pieces. We're gonna be grabbing pieces A interior and piece M. So what you're gonna do is that you're going to measure down on here three fourths of an inch. From there, I did have a pink pen. I did, I know I did. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna see what, oh, I have another color that's close. Cause it may have just like rolled on by because that's what I do. Oh, there it is, pink. I, whenever we have back to school supplies, I always buy these Crayola markers because they wash out of cotton. They're supposed to be, you know, um, stain proof. So they don't matter when I'm marking the bag, they won't reappear. None of that. And when I, if I wash the bag again, it just washes right out. So you make more three fourths of an inch, inch down from the pocket piece. And then we're going to do a half an inch from there. Find your center mark and you're going to measure eight inches, eight and a half inches. So here and here, you're going to stitch in this box. My I put pens, you could put actually double-sided tape if it works easier for you. But when you stitch this, you're gonna want to go have smaller stitch length. So when I normally do this, if I'm on my smaller Juki, I'll go 2.5. If I'm in my bigger Juki, I'll go three. And you want to have these stitches nice and taut. When you stitch all the way around, back stitch and uh, make sure you back stitch before and after. Remove your pins. And what you can do from here is I tell people to go to the iron, but I'm not ironing right now. So I'm going to seam roll and then like press 
if you're using iron or seam roll or use your you know your your fingernail whatever is accessible to you you can use a um i know people use boning tools as well and we're just going to just really kind of manipulate this fabric until it's going to go you know right sides out we're going to then get a pair of sharp scissors and cut into our pocket and we're going to cut into a v not into our stitches just close to it if you do cut into your stitches just go around one eighth of an inch or around the box that you already have and you'll be fine it'll just be a little bit of a smaller pocket but nobody will even notice All right, so all that pressing that we did, we're going to now flip this inside. And then we're gonna take the front and I just give it a nice finger press or again, go to your iron and you can press it out. If it's, if it's puckering in one area, that means that you might need to do a little bit more of a snip inside. Just not the threads. All right. So from here, this piece keeps on wanting to flip flop down. So I'm just going to grab some double sided tape and put it underneath this top seam. just temporarily just to hold it. There we go. Nice and we're gonna grab our 10 inch zipper and I'm going to put, you could pin or you could double sided tape, whatever you have handy, whatever you want, go for it. I like pinning, I like sometimes gluing, um, I'll put Elmer's glue and then hit it with the iron with it on there and it'll just stay put. There's a lot of different methods. Do what's best for you. Have the zipper pull going into the direction that you want it to. Again, I like to have my zippers close to the left, but there are some lefties in my family that love to see the zipper close to the right. So do again what's best for you and your family what i like to do or your business or your gift giving <laughs> i like to find the middle bar and line it up as best as i possibly can okay zipper valley i knew the zipper tape was going to come to me at a weird time i get my i got the zipper tape from zipper valley she if you ever have the 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 privilege to purchase from her her she has some of the best branding i've ever seen and she, her packaging and even her like receipts are just super sweet like you um like she, <laughs> it was like thank you for your purchase shanova i'm gonna have some artist spray paint your name all over the world for your thanks like it's just really sweet and courteous and very great customer service we're going to stitch all the way around now there's other ways to put in pockets. If you don't want to do it this way, by all means, do it best, like what method you like. This just has a simple slip pocket. My zipper pocket's a little crooked, but you know what? Alice in Wonderland's a little crooked. I like to go over the stitching just one time extra on the sides because again, that's an area that has a lot of uh, pressure a lot of uh, a lot of tension opens and closes a lot and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to go over the zipper I like to do like one or two bar tacks over the side zippers again because when you open it up you just don't want like just one row of stitching when you're doing this method so we have our zipper pocket we're going to place this pocket right on top of it 
there's a different method if you're going to be birthing it because this would be the pocket that you're going to be turning your bag out from but because i'm doing binding i can do i can do it this way i'm going to close off the pocket and what i like to do is i like to start from one side definitely back stitch and what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to veer this to hit this part where we had to cut the snips because this area right here is where the zipper stop is and you want to make sure you can get that area nice and secure then i'm going to lift this up that's why i only put the double sided tape on the seam on the first seam so that way i just sew across here without any hesitation and then again i'm going to pull this up get this little v as best as i can go over it once or twice now i know my zipper is really secure and then i'm going to close off my zipper pocket We have a nice zipper pocket nice and cool and this is real this is kind of zipper pocket where you like to have the pretty zipper tape because it just adds like an accent if you wish so we have that all set aside we're going to get ready to put the bag together the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our exterior pocket i mean our exterior back and our interior back and just place these together. So I'm going to pop a few clips. Get everything to match up. Time, make sure everything matches up because you're we're gonna base this all together. Use as many or as few clips as you want. Your discretion. All right. So we're going to base this around. I'm gonna use a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm one eighth of an inch. I apologize. You can do one fourth of an inch too because again, I'm only part that are vinyl are the the pink faux leather. I don't know where I got that from. I ha I got it, I think, off of Etsy many moons ago, and I don't believe the store is open. Because I think I was doing it for somebody's bag I was making. And then when I went back, yeah, when I went back, they didn't have this printing. This, this, so I just, I've been having an extra, and this pattern is awesome, because then I was like, hey, I can use this really pretty pink as an accent. And see right here I was able to catch that it did not catch this is why you're basting you did not catch that and it's just important to catch everything you possibly can so that way it just makes it easier when you're um, binding and you know everything is inside nice and secure I also like to put my zipper in the middle and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because if they have any dingling things, they could, we're already gonna deal with this part when we're, um, when we're uh, binding. So the less we have to deal with, the better it is. Move this. We're going to trim threads, any excess overage. All right. So we have the pocket. I'm going to move this zipper to the middle. We're going to grab our front, front panel piece and 
this interior is blank. So again, you can make another zipper pocket, a hidden slip pocket, um, having, you know, center divider, have like pencils, pen, like things you can have, you can create a lot of different stuff. But most people, most backpacks I make for people, they just want like a zipper pocket and just for it to be like well padded, like foam, so they could put their computers and everything in it without having worrying that if they put their bag on the floor that it's going to get damaged or whatnot. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Base this down. And again, I know it's tedious, but trust me, it's worth the headache knowing that everything's basted down and it won't pop out at the end. Like, oh, I didn't catch the exterior. <laughs> I really love this red thing off the paint. Okay, and I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> it the walking the walking foot, this is a walking foot, but it's not making it go round. It's your hand gestures. If you watched any of my other videos, you will see me. Like if you're a if you're a baker and you're rolling that pie, I'm telling you that this comes easy. I noticed quilters do really well because they're, they're used to hitting those curves um, relatively easy. It's practice makes perfect. Um, practice on scrap pieces of like when you have excess foam that you you think you're going to throw away, don't practice on it. It just, it's like anything we do in life, the more you practice, the better it comes out. All right, trim it up. All right, so we have both pieces with their interior and exteriors together. And then we're going to find our centers, which we drew. Uh, actually, I need to draw on this one. And, oh, the green pins in my head. I'm like looking for it. I'm gonna draw the notch. and draw the other notch. All right. Then we're gonna find our centers for this. So I like to make sure side seams meet side seams and then I clip it and I do the same thing on the other side. All the side seams match up. And then I just kind of squish it down and then I make a V. We have a 3 8 of inch seam allowance, so you can make a nice size V. And everything should pan out. Then we're going to take the two, we're going to take our bottom V's and match them, match our V's up real quick. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, your, your side seams are your, are your um, other centers to match the notches. It's just small little V. All right. So then we're going to start with our front pocket. Now you could staple, but this, <laughs> she really did make a really good gusset and you'll see in a minute, it fits really perfectly. We're going to match the V's to the notches area that we need to put. Matching notches. Okay. So then we're going to, you want to make sure that this looks right. I usually like fold it on itself to make sure that it looks 
solid. I'm going to take my foot off the pedal and start <laughs> clipping her gusset. Oh my gosh, I am like breaking clips left and right today. Her gusset fits really, really nice. I'm, I promise you, I don't have like freak. I do have freakishly strong hand, but I shouldn't be break. I broke like four clips already. It's cool though. I have my water. <laughs> I'm just going to. Ease the steam in. Take your time. This gusset fits really nice. I didn't have to do any clipping. So I was like, oh wow, this is like a perfect size gusset. Make sure notches match up. Take your time, ease it in. These blue clips, I have these like blue and these yellow ones and they just, they keep on popping. I have this one orange clip and it's the only orange clip I have. Somehow it just stays with me and it's like completely broken, but it's always there. Like a weird reminder. <laughs> All right, so we eased it in. And like I like I said, I like to fold to see if the, the side seams are fitting and I'm going to sew around this at one fourth of an inch. Take your time. And if you want, um, I like to use a um, stiletto to help guide the fabric because it's better than my finger. Ask me how I know, like 18 times, ask me how I know. <laughs> so just, it helps both areas nice and taut. I always like to do the main panel first and I'll show you why. And as soon as we're done basting, I'll show you why you'll see. Cause like you can see if there's any puckers, um, areas you miss. I'm just gonna hold this nice and taut. Because I when you're mixing like cotton that naturally wants to stretch and vinyl and stabilizers, you just want to make sure that it the less puckering, the puckering's above your stitch line. Not below. If it's below, you're gonna see it in the bag. That's it. Binding is never an issue for me. It's always um basting because basting is like key to make your binding look good 
So what I do is like, I sew this down at one fourth of an inch. And let's see, I sew this down at one fourth of an inch, right? I mean, no, sorry. Yeah, one fourth of an inch. Then when I put the first part of the binding on, I sew a scant three eighths of an inch. And then when I flip it around, then I sew it at the full three. All right. So what I like to do is, okay, I sewed, I sewed it around. I like to flip it out because if there was like something I really missed, I can go back and correct it right now. This is going to be the main focal for everybody when they see your bag. So you can see if there is like a pucker or a wrinkle, this is the time where you can take it all out. So that's our binding. Now my binding is different. I kind of do it like a quilt in a way, but it works. So I, first and foremost, you can buy your binding, but I do like when you make it because you can make it look really cool and give it some extra pizzazz. So I have my little binding person and I'm going to leave a tell. I always start at the top of the bag because when you look inside the bag, you see the bottom. You don't see the top of the bag. So I'm going to leave a tell about one inch. And I'm going to start a scant three, three eighths of an inch and I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to my binding person is inside my bag <laughs> holding my binding. And this is a tulip pink, I believe. And I'm just going to go around. I took, oh, so I took, I made my binding two and, and a half inches wide. And instead of folding it on each other, like you normally see, I have it folded in half and the raw edges are reaching the raw edges. And this is the nice enclosed edge. And you'll see what I'm doing in a minute. And it might help somebody else. Because I know a binding seems to be like something, it's either you love it or you hate it. And the reason why I love it, because I feel like, again, you're not birthing, really birthing a bag. It's just giving it nice clean edges. And you can just pull the binding nice and taut when you're going around. There. Um, make sure you definitely cut on the bias and not straight grain because if you do that then you're going to get a lot of wrinkles in your binding and it doesn't want to stretch you, like I think I made this with like a half a fat quarter 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 Each one of our sewing skills that we learn, whether it's from garment making, um, um, making rugs, doing shoes, um, or quilting, we learn from it in bag making. Quilters have this, they do this with a lot of their bindings and it's something we could do in bags and it will literally make our whole life a lot easier. But making a bias binding can be frustrating for some. So we're just going around this nice curve real quick again. And then when I get to that one inch, I'm going to cut a little bit of a tail, put my binding dude up. And when I get here, I'm going to move the fabric. I'm going to sew them right on top of each other and back stitch. So I'm going to, if you want to, you can sew these two down so they become one. Um, I'm going to just trim and what, now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. And you can trim areas that you know can be a little problematic, like they have too much bulk. Just don't trim into the stitch line. 
and you can just fold it over. Some areas will be easier to roll over, others not. I'm just trimming up any excess that bulk and not trimming in the bias binding tape or the previous stitching. I know it looks like it's Edward Scissors hands over here, but. <laughs> I'm just going to go process and I'm also going to be able to catch any stray threads at this time. Just be careful when you're trimming not to trim into your seam allowance because then you're going to have to like go all around again. And you're basically just cutting out bulk. If I would have made my um, by my binding a little bit bigger, like two and a half, but I think I did two and one fourth, I, or um, even three, I could have just enclosed it all. But I didn't have a lot of this fabric to be honest with you. And I was like, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna not have it because it was so whimsical. All right, so let me grab all this little bit of extra bulk. Then I'm just going to flip it. Sorry, I have a little bit extra bulk here. I'm just going to flip it. All right. So what I do is I usually try to start on one edge that doesn't have like tons of bulk. And I'm just going to flip the bag over. You can do, I see some people doing um, like waterproof canvas. I'm not the best at that one. My thread started like balling up because like the needle was gummed up. So give me just one second and I'm gonna re-thread this. All right, let's redo this. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And I'm just using my stiletto to help bring it over. And as I'm I'm just taking my time. Make sure if you stop, stop at the needle down position. And I'm just, you see me with the needle down and I'm just maneuvering my bag. And not trying to get my finger, so. <laughs> oh my God, that's the worst one that happens. <laughs> The absolute worst. I'm actually afraid of this machine for that. Like I've, <laughs> I broke the tip of my um, left index finger on a needle, on, and I, I have no feeling on it. But I can tell you when a storm's coming. <laughs> Let's do this. Just position it, keep maneuvering it. I know it could be tedious, but I promise. 
promise you the end result is going to be totally worth it. And whoever you're making this for, whether it's yourself or a gift or selling it, they're going to like appreciate it. This is a nice size um, bag too. And I know some of the testers in the group are trying, experimenting. Somebody may want at 85%, someone may want at 75%, and it was the cutest mini backpack ever. And we're just going to maneuver our backpack and pull nice and taut. Here, if you it takes a while to position, it's cool. You got time. back stitch there's like some bulk on here that I need to eliminate so that way you can have a nice clean edge make sure you do not cut into your um binding bias binding show that use your words all right <laughs> pulling this nice and taut let's go let's finish this binding off on this front one and we're almost done. As soon as we done, we're done with this front one, we put in the back, very similar. We're gonna do the binding. And then we're going to put the swivel, um, the tri-gliders on so that way we can wear it as a backpack. And you get to see how it's done. I love, I'm a, I'm a sucker for bi like binding. I just, I don't know. It's, it just really became my favorite over the past year. Do not let the saliva hit your finger either. done with the binding on the first one let's trim our threads basic all the threads that's a bad thing when you have the same color like red it's like merging in with the so we have our front interior done and we're about to put in our Exterior. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place it inside. We're going to match up the notches. I like to do the front and back notches first. Crook on both sides. Okay. This side has a little bit more bulk, so just give it a little bit more room to ease in. Take your time, just easing it in. I still have threads on this side. <laughs> 
tell you that I love when you match your binding color um, colors to um, your bi binding bias, your thread to your binding bias. But the problem is, is that if it's like the same color as your back, sometimes it's really hard to see all the threads. And I have a bazillion lights by me, so I should be able to see them. <laughs> Let plant these in everything to the gusset. And like I said, this is a very rare thing. I didn't have to clip into anything. It just, the gusset fits perfectly. I love when a designer can do that. It just makes your life a whole lot easier. Now you can um, make this go flat and then base this at one fourth of an inch. Try not to break any... Uh, more clips because you already know I'm all about breaking clips apparently. <laughs> and what I like to do is like I'll open up the zipper a little bit or all the way. It, it's really up to you so I can stick my hand to squish it down. And we're gonna get squishy with it so the great thing about foam is it just bounces back. I like foam. I, the bag's always lighter. It has great form. It's easy to buy foam, you can, and there's so many different kinds. You can get um, headliner foam from like upholstery shops, car shops, boating places, and it's it's super cost effective. But I know some people don't like foam. I think you could use Decoville Light and stuff like that, but it just would not have the same standing structure. Structure, and it'll add weight. When I think of it it's like a backpack that someone's using for hiking or for their kids, you want something a little bit more lightweight, a little bit more squishy, so that they, you can stuff as much as you possibly can in it. Especially if this is a to-go bag for your kid. Like you're like, bye, off to grandma's house. Mm. Push him out with a bag, you'll be fine. Just be easy with the curves. Take your time. See raw edges to raw edges. Take your time when you're getting over that hump for um for your connectors. Okay, so what I do here, because this is all now on before I, I start putting the bias binding on, you can flip it out because you know, you're doing the bone thing but what you can do is I just kind of check the front I run my finger around the bottom to see if a hole pokes through or something pills up you can put a flashlight in here too if you wish you know whatever is easier for you I'm going to go around the areas that have um some bulky curves now before I put the bias binding on The sides are always a little bit bulky because of the extra pockets, the materials. Okay. Then I'm going to get my little binding guy and I'm going to create a tail that is a little bit over one inch. And we're going to grab my tails. Apparently it's really difficult for me to do that right now. <laughs> Raw edges to raw edges. You're going to go a scant three eighths of an inch. Okay. 
and just pulling the binding a little taut around the curves so that way it can form really nicely when we get to the other side. getting close to that area. So I'm going to cut a towel that's a little longer, put my little binding person on the side, and I'm going to bring this over here, and sew back and forth and create it. And again, with this method, you can um, sew these two together and it, it gives it even a nicer finish. All right. So we're just going to just make sure we take out any excess bulk, like cut around um, excess bulk around the, I can't talk today. Just cut around excess bulk around the, um, areas that like has extra foam, just not in your bias binding or in your stitches. So that way it can be nice and pretty all the way around. A pair of duck bell scissors will do good, but work what you got. I have a pair of sprinkler scissors and it'll be fine. If you don't want to trim, like I said, I would just make wire tape. All right, I think I got everything. Let's start doing this. All right, and need another bobbin. almost done. All right. So I'm going to position the bag so that I'm squishing it down so I can start, have a nice starting point. Back stitch. And the bag and me are just going to get real squishy. <laughs> Thank you. 
just picking this up so that way it can wrap around. And I'm kind of like maneuvering the bag on the outside so it can just take these curves a little easier. Stopping with the needle down is really important. trying to pull these random threads <laughs> as well. And see how I'm just using like the stiletto head and I'm just like using it to pull over the fabric a little bit past the stitches we previously made to cover it. And it takes some, because you can do this and clip it all. I don't know why I do it difficult. Like, you can clip all of it too, but I don't know. I wind up using the stiletto anyway, anyways when I'm clipping. My clipping, making sure things are out of the way. sure all right at raw edges are in case. The back stitch. Okay, let's trim these threads. It's like really pretty binding. It's all in case. There's no nothing poking out. And now we're gonna birthday. Let me stiff these threads while I can. All right, and it'll be easy when you're binding it. We're not having to come out of the pocket. We're just grabbing a corner. And pulling it out. If you're, I also recommend if you're doing like an all cork or all leather or faux leather vinyl, you just binding it might be best. Hold on, I see an area that might need a little bit TLC. Give me one second. that the binding did not go through. Hold on. Okay, one second. Of course my threads want to act up at the end of the show. Very in. Right at the end of the Thank you. 
sometimes that happens. You'll see like an area that you're like, hey, it's poking out from the binding. Just pull that binding over and reposition it. You get, I'm, you can, what you can do is you can, everyone, uh, what I do for my seams is I start rolling it and I kind of like sometimes put binder clips on it overnight so that way it can form better. you see pictures of this have definitely been formed overnight so what we're going to do right now is make the backpack straps well not make like put them together <laughs> okay so we're going to grab one of our tri-gliders put it through and we're going to make some room i like to slide our connector in and we're going to go back through the tri-glider just give it a little bit more slack and then bring it through and then i'm going to put a clip right here because i'm going to rivet it in place and then i'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm going to take the tri glider pull out these excess threads <laughs> and what I with these what I literally I roll and massage this until it's nice and crisp and it'll come out crisp it's just been traumatized from <laughs> being bound and flipped inside out twice for me to fix a mistake so it makes it easy to know that you're doing the right side because you know this part is on the right side oh my god it's like the threads are going back as soon as i pull <laughs> all right so we're gonna feed this through the other end of the tri-glider and we're gonna clip it then from here, I grab my handy dandy. If it's still there, <laughs> hole puncher. There we go. And I just punch a hole through the middle of where the clip was. You can sew this. I just I my preference is a rivet. I I'll put sometimes two rivets. If I know the person is going to be like carrying heavy items. Give me one second because I need to repunch. There we go. And if your um, webbing starts getting a little furry, you can just hit it with the flame to seal those ends. Not on the cotton, not on the cotton though. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put a hole through this one over here. There we go. Grabbing a rivet. Then I'm going to grab my press. And I'm going to give this some slack so I can press without 
like setting my rivet without like uh, making it go crooked. Setting a rivet wrong is <coughs> not fun. I have done that too where I had to like remove rivets. It's not a fun process. So I try to give it as much slack as I can and then set it. Get all the burrs off of it. And again, um, for this, if you were like, hey, I don't I want it to poke out some more. Overnight, you can put you can put binder clips on it. Um, put a piece of fabric if you're using vinyl so that it doesn't get imprinted, and take your time and just roll out the roll out the binding. It'll pop out. But we have this really 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 cute bag, which I need to. I'm like burning threads in front of you. So we have this beautiful Fortuna bag that has a nice zipper pocket in the back. You have a really beautiful strapping really beautiful strapping. I love the zipper pocket in the back. We have two slip pockets in the front and a zipper pocket in the inside. You just made an awesome backpack. So what I need you to do is take a picture with your cell phone, whatever you have on you, put it in the Facebook group, show your love, um, post it out. I, I definitely want to see it. Um, and if you have any questions in reference to this bag, um, binding on um, the binding method, please leave a comment down below. I'm really responsive and I will try my best to help you. If I don't, we have a really awesome community where somebody else might answer it too and give you their intake. Have fun, enjoy it. So this is the Fortuna. It's a great backpack and I think it'll be really good for back to school, traveling, hiking, how, whatever you wanna do. So if you can like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification button. It helps me out tremendously. If you want to share because you think it's worthy, it helps out tremendously too. So until the next time I see you, happy sewing. Bye.